Hey traders, checking in on the stock market today. We had a gap down open in the broader market with a lot of pre-market weakness. And in that scenario, when you're looking to play the bounce, and in this scenario, it was first hourly oversold conditions since the CPI. So we're gonna talk about backburners. If you don't know what backburners are, Google chart guys backburners, and you'll find a video describing everything about it. But today was filled with them. So it was first hourly oversold conditions since CPI. We know if bulls are going to be in complete control of the trend, that hourly oversold is going to mark the daily high or low. Is it possible it did? Yes, but we don't know yet. We will know tomorrow because the bulls have to confirm the hourly uptrend. What we saw happen was a big hourly bounce, very impressive, a pullback to a higher low, and then we got to break the high of the bounce, the high of today, to confirm the hourly trend change. And that would have us say, all right, daily higher low is set. We've been using daily EMA 12 as a guide and a target to be keeping an eye on. And it was an aligning of those things. First hourly oversold, daily EMA 12 support. And not only was the hourly oversold, but 15 minute RSI was down just getting into the teens at the bottom. The five minute RSI was down in the low twenties. So oversold on a number of time frames. At this point in time, bulls are a-okay with how consolidation looks. After we bounced on the hourly and topped out, look at where we found the hourly high or low. First five minute oversold conditions, a back burner. It's the same thing, just a different time frame. First five minute oversold marked the hourly high or low. That's exactly what bulls want to see. The only thing missing here from a big check mark is just we ran out of time. We did not break the high of the day to confirm the hourly trend change. So that's what it's all about tomorrow. And looking at SPY, what that would look like, the candles are very different because of the gap down open, that would look like breaking the high of today, confirming the hourly trend change, and then our most important short-term support level becomes 390.14 for the bulls to try and maintain complete control. And of course, after, if we break the high of today, it's then all about 402.31, the high of the bounce, to see if bulls can confirm continuation and continuation continued control of the uptrend. So NASDAQ, same deal. Right off daily EMA 12, hourly oversold, big old bounce, five minute oversold, marking the hourly high or low into the end of the day. And we got to break the high of today tomorrow to confirm the daily high or low. QQQ has to break 286.32. If we do, it is all about 293.26. So the only, there's only a number of things that can happen tomorrow. Only a few of them. Number one, we fail the high of today tomorrow. That's definitely an initial red flag for the bulls. We break it, daily high or low is set, we fail the recent high and confirm a downtrend. That's a possibility that we're gonna have to be watching for. And the third is continuation. For the most confidence, if the bulls break the high of today tomorrow, they need to keep that hourly uptrend until the bounce high breaks. Because if we lose that hourly uptrend before breaking the bounce high, that's when probabilities increase for the potential lower high and lower low. So first things first, have to break the high of today tomorrow. Once we do, hourly uptrend is our guide and bounce high resistance is the most important resistance that we're keeping an eye on. Just a note, keep an eye out. Next week, we're going to be doing our only membership sale that we do each year, which is Black Friday. So annual discounts. I'll give a whole bunch more information about that next week, but just letting you know that is coming. <clears throat> The dollar. So the dollar is trying to get a bounce going. 107.27 is the highest level that we've seen on this bounce in the last few trading days. And the question is, is this a bear flag? It's the daily bounce is clearly underway. Same thing. If we can't get over daily EMA 12 on this bounce, as it drops down fairly rapidly, then it's just a daily bear flag. So the daily EMA 12 is going to be my gauge. And of course, if the S&P 500 is going to be a bull flag, and if the bulls are going to confirm the hourly trend change tomorrow in their favor, they want to see the dollar break the low of today to increase the probabilities of a daily bear flag. Semiconductors, bulls buying the dip. NVDA had earnings yesterday. Not very eventful. You wouldn't know NVDA had earnings if you looked at the daily chart. It did pretty much what most names did. The difference is there was relative weakness after the initial bounce because we gave it all back and hit a lower low whereas most names have an hourly higher low there. So that's an easy way to determine relative strength and weakness when you're looking at an ETF and comparing it. 
is if the ETF or the individual name is at the high of the day or low of the day and, and it's not aligning, meaning Amazon hit a new low of the day in the afternoon. When Amazon's hitting a new low of the day, QQQ was not close. So that clearly showed us relative weakness in Amazon, relative weakness in NVDA. So keeping an eye in that relative, keeping an eye out for that relative weakness, Tesla, same thing, hourly downtrend. So Tesla still has not shaped up a daily high or low. It's still a potential daily bear flag. There's still relative weakness there. Any name that hit a new low of the day, the second half of the day has relative weakness. That can change tomorrow, but that's one way to recognize it. <clears throat> Healthcare, we were watching this four hour rising wedge. Technically we broke it bearish. And at this point, I don't care about it anymore. Why? Because it's not giving me any information that the price is not. I have daily EMA 12 continuing to hold. We've held it for weeks at this point. If the bears are gonna prove anything to me, we need to see a bear break of 131.40. I'm using that level because there's a couple little levels nearby, but I'm using the lowest of those nearby levels because obviously if we break the lowest, we break all of them. And that would lose the daily EMA 12. The goal for the bulls obviously is to confirm the hourly uptrend with SPY and QQQ to hold daily EMA 12 and be looking right back at the recent high. XLF, daily EMA 12, hourly trend change back to the bulls needed and trying to head back to the recent high. <clears throat> so again, in this moment, the daily consolidation is exactly what bulls want to see. There are no red flags on the daily charts at this point. That could change tomorrow. That could change Monday. But in this moment, all things are looking good. IWM, we know, has pulled back more. It is definitely still one of the weaker names, and you're seeing it in growth. Look at the biotech sector on the hourly today. Its bounce was much weaker. We hit a new low of the day, barely, but we did, into the close. So a weaker bounce didn't close up near the high of the day. You look at ARKK, same deal, didn't close near the high of the day. So growth names are a little bit weaker here. And so IWM has, a, has more work to do to head back to that recent high. CCJ Uranium, two day lower high has been set. This is a great example for how timeframes interrelate with each other. We are scouting a monthly higher low. Anything above 20 is a monthly higher low. To set a monthly higher low, again, we're very likely to form a monthly inside bar with 13 days left in the month and a bunch of those being weekends and holidays. But the two day time frame is nice and clear. We were anticipating a two day lower high was the most likely scenario. We had an hourly rising wedge two days ago, confirmed bearish to shape up that two day lower high. Now it's just a good old-fashioned equilibrium. If this two-day equilibrium breaks bull, our monthly higher low is very likely set. If it breaks bear, we don't have any confidence that our monthly higher low is set. And we know that volatility is coming to CCJ next week when this range breaks, very likely next week. Although again, it's the holiday, isn't it? So three and a half trading days next week, so we'll see. Gold daily consolidation finally underway. So the, the bear miners getting nice bounce the last few days. We knew to be watching for this bounce because the metals were so overextended, but now we're scouting the bear miners to set a daily lower high and the bull miners to set a higher low. Here's JNUG off daily EMA 12. We didn't get to hourly oversold conditions. We got real close, not officially there, but for bulls that were looking to buy the dip on the metals and the miners, <clears throat> this is your dip. So establish a game plan. I like to have, rather than, you know, sometimes if I'm real confident, I'll be scaling into consolidation, but there are other times where I prefer to have a clear level where I say, that's either the daily high or low, or I'm wrong, and I use that as a stop. So if we break the high of today, tomorrow, the daily high or low is set. And again, that's now giving us a new benchmark level of 3124 that must hold. I might've just said the wrong number. It's 3124 that is the current low. And silver pulling back as well. Again, if you're looking to buy the, the silver, if you're feeling FOMO on the way up, this is the pullback you're looking for. Four hour approaching oversold, not quite there. We are going to be scouting a four hour lower high to be the result of the next bounce. But again, this is the consolidation where if you miss a move, you're looking to enter on consolidation. Oil bears following through very nicely. 
Probabilities continue to increase for the monthly lower high. We may confirm a monthly downtrend on oil into the end of the year. The weekly trend change with zero follow through, any trend change with zero follow through means zoom out and scout a flag. And in this instance, it's a potential monthly bear flag. 81.30 is a key support level in play. And then after that, we're looking down towards that recent low. And due to the red day today, we now have a lot of space for a daily lower high to be the result of the next bounce, anything under 90.10. Natural gas following through a little bit from the four hour bull break, getting over this double top we talked about yesterday. And now it's just a question of can bulls break 676 to keep this move going, or do we just tighten up within this wide range for most of next week? Four hour uptrend is now our short term guide. If we lose it, it's a lower high compared to 676. So that's where we stand. I didn't play the bounce today. I, I need to stop scheduling things for Thursday. Thursday is my day to, to handle things. And Thursdays are turning out to be really volatile, really good trading days. So I'm gonna have to restructure my life a bit. But nice volatility in both directions. We did finally top out and pull back. 1% plus in these ETFs, so bears did finally get their chance. Retraced back 60% of the bounce, but bulls buying into the end of the day has that hourly trend change on the table into tomorrow. I put out a US or a cannabis video in general. Uh, that's on our YouTube channel. Check out our playlist on the cannabis sector and talked in depth about it, so not gonna cover it in this video. And other than that, I hope you have a great Thursday evening. The giant kale is the last survivor in the garden. Everything else dying. Well, I guess there's some lettuce there. Everything else dying from the frost. The leaves are down, except for some more of these willow oak. Got them out of the pond. Had to go into the pond in my underwear the other day to get the last of the invasive parrot feather out and we're almost ready for winter mode.